name? My name is Yad. Hey. Yad. Yeah. Yad. Well, my name is Wish. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another episode here in Taiwan. Ni hao. Ni hao. And as you can see, today is a beautiful sunny day. So, oh, yeah. after like over a week of solid rain, we are finally seeing the sunshine and we are able to see the beautiful greenery and mountains. So, so beautiful. And it's actually a blue sky in this country. So, today. It's a huge difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it just huge. looks totally different. So today guys we are heading over to Toroko National Park which is one of the most beautiful places in Taiwan and that's why a lot of people actually visit this place. So we're going to take you on a big big adventure today guys. Make sure you stay till the end because we're going to be going to about nine different spots. Nine different spots yeah from hiking trails to suspension bridges. It's going to have it all basically. And even a lunch with uh, Aboriginal people I think or cooked by them. Yeah so it's going to be a jam-packed day guys so if you are new here don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button or hit it at the end of the video if you've enjoyed it. So let's get the video started. This is Taiwan, one of the hidden gems of East Asia yet to be explored by many around the world but heavily populated by over 23.5 million people. Taiwan is a beautiful island nation located in East Asia with a rich cultural heritage and stunning natural scenery. From bustling cities like Taipei to serene mountain landscapes and pristine beaches, Taiwan has something for everyone. Whether you're a foodie, adventurer or cultural enthusiast, Taiwan is sure to leave a lasting impression on you. In this video, I'll be showing you the best of Taiwan and hopefully you'll be convinced to also visit one day. So we actually need to get a taxi all the way to the pickup spot because we're actually going with a tour today because it was actually impossible for us to get a car because you can rent a car to do this trip yourself but they needed an international driving license or a permit sorry which I've never actually required around the world so something that I have to get when I go back to the UK it just costs like five six dollars but never needed it anywhere in the world but here they said you have to have one for them to rent you a car quite frustrating because we weren't able to like move about as much as we wanted but anyway so we're getting this taxi it's about 40 minutes over to the pickup point where we're going to meet the group and we are going to head to all the spots of them so let's go Bye-bye. Uh, uh, Alright guys, so we have made it and it seems to be in Huilin, Huilin town and Huilin city. city and we are actually meeting the guys over what seems to be like a bus stop area so let's go and find them. as we call it and we have Tiffany which is actually going to be our tour guide however she's currently driving so we're not going to distract her um, and we're going to head over to the first spot let's go this area here where you enter the national park and it's so so beautiful it's literally this huge archway that we're going to go under in the car and everyone is just kind of here taking some pictures because it's a super famous spot it's just like so so beautiful So we have finally made it to the official start point of this, I'd say adventurous day in Trek. So we actually had to park in that tunnel over there because it's basically a public holiday today. Well, this whole weekend, the whole park is rammed. There's cars everywhere. And in that tunnel, there's cars literally lined up to park to enjoy the day today because it's like a bank holiday. Anyway, so I'm just gonna show you around a little bit of this spot that we were stopped in. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. It reminds me a little bit of Pakistan and the mountains there. It's just so, so green here, so beautiful, and um, yeah, just so great to be back in nature. <music> Starting off our journey here in Shakading Trail, which is roughly about one hour and 30 minutes. You basically go through these beautiful kind of archways, as you can see. And this is all marble, right? 
Yeah. Wow, this is just gorgeous, guys. Look, you've got like a river flowing as you're walking down. It's just so, so beautiful. We are joined today by Tiffany. And Hi. She will be taking us around on our adventures today and showing us the best places to see. Yes, of course. Yeah. And how long have you been uh, touring people around here? Actually, I'm a freshman. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. How long is freshman? Uh, half a year before the COVID-19. Okay. Yeah, then I get started. So... For the job. Just the, this tour is just the fourth. Fourth tour? <laughs> ah. Well, you're doing a good job so yeah, far. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The trail so far has just been very, very relaxing and it's actually paved out really, really well. So it's not like too rocky or anything. They've obviously created this specifically for tours and people to come down. So it's very user friendly, if you yeah. like. Not and too people difficult. are here with their pets, walking their dogs and stuff. Yeah, pets, families, everyone is here and us. So guys, if you're wondering what the weather is like when we're here, so at the moment it's actually very, very pleasant. I've just had to take off my jacket because it's getting very, very warm. Even though it's been raining the last few days, the temperature is roughly around 19, 20 degrees Celsius. And uh, we're now in April, so it's kind of perfect. I'd say perfect hiking uh, temperatures. So not too cold and not too hot, just perfect. Maybe just bring like a rain jacket with you just in case it does rain. Just having a little mini break across the trail, guys, and come across this gorgeous turquoise water. Look at that. Wow. This area that you see here, we're going to go and see an indigenous tribe a little bit later in this video, but it's going to be the Toroko tribe and they actually own all of this forest land behind us. And you're not actually allowed to trespass it at all, otherwise there's going to be some heavily fines imposed on you. But as we are just arriving to a little break spot, we have this beautiful view of the river and how the rocks have been separated millions of years ago. You want to say hello for YouTube? Hello. My station is in Nang Nangam. He <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, telling us about his high-speed rail train. We are so lucky with the weather today, guys. It's almost blue skies, and we are able to enjoy this tour. We've actually arrived to our first break point where you can get some uh, local snacks and maybe apparently there's a famous sausage that we can get around here. Let's see what we can get. Oh, hello my friend, how are you? Ni hao. Ni hao, ni shi nari dai da? Oh, I don't know that much. Hey. More English? Uh, you say? English, In uh, England, yes. England? Yes. Oh, England? Oh, yeah. Very good. Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. What's okay. your name? Your name? <laughs> name? Well, or Taiwan Aboriginal Turk or Turk. Ah, so uh, he's, he's, he's a Taiwan uh, Aboriginal original uh, Turk. Uh, and name, my name Yad. Uh, Yad. Yeah. Yad. Well, my name uh, Winsi. 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 Wow. Oh, so we've got yes. Winsi here. Well, Winsi. nice to meet you, Winsi. Ah, uh, nice Goodbye. to meet you. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Bye. See you. Okay. Oh, so cool. So he was basically saying he's an original uh, Aborigine from the area. So cool to meet these. Um, I wasn't actually expecting to um, see like Aboriginal people around here, but I think this. It's probably going to be something I'm really interested to understand and learn more about. So guys, the road we're walking on has been built by Japanese. As you might know, Taiwan was ruled by Japanese people. So, um, and I think it leads us to the hydro station where they used to get water and electrics. So guys, we are learning some of the local language here, which is Mandarin. And uh, just to give you guys some tips when you come here. So to basically say hello and how are you, it's actually ni hao, whereas obviously in English you kind of say hi, how are you, in kind of two words. Uh, but they go all in one word. So when you say ni hao, it also means hi, how are you doing? And also if you want to say let's go in their lang in Mandarin, it is... Um, tello. Tello, tello, tello. Which actually when I was over in uh, uh, Pakistan, they say cello, so very similar. So tello. Cello, uh, tello. Tello, tello, let's go. back over at the uh, market area because our trek is only halfway to a certain point and then we're heading back now but just before we do our guide is actually buying us a very famous sausage that you can only find in this region of Taiwan which is actually made by the Aborigines yes either here in the mountains or in the night market yeah 
And it's a very famous one. Apparently, it tastes delicious. It smells delicious. Yeah, and I'm seeing basically it comes with one sausage and one spring onion. So let's see how it tastes. So guys, this is how they make the famous sausages here. They've got this huge grill. Hey, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, there it is. Look at that. Here it is. It's very juicy. All the juices are flowing. Let's give it a good taste. It a good... Yum yum. Mm. Oh, look at that. It's proper juicy, isn't it? So, guys, it's also got some Taiwanese black or specific pepper that grows in the mountains. Apparently. There's something sweet inside. I can't figure it out, but it is super yum. Delicious. We are back where we started now because we are going to head over to the next spot on our tour which is called Swallow Grotto, which is basically the area where it's like this huge marble cave. So, I'm a little bit out of breath, because they don't have a lift to get back up, so we have to get the stairs. But it's good fitness. It's all good fitness. Let's go. But just before we actually head off to the next spot, we're having a quick toilet break. The reason I'm mentioning the toilet specifically is because obviously there's no toilets on the actual trail. So there's one in the beginning and there is also one about 10 minutes before you reach here. So just bear that in mind when you come here. And also you may see some taxis that are behind me. So in busy periods, if you're not able to rent a car, you can actually just get a taxi to come to this spot and they'll wait for you. But I'm guessing that's probably gonna cost quite a hefty amount because they're gonna end up waiting for you. So best try to get a guide or get a car prior to coming, just get it all organized and get your international uh, permit if you haven't got one already from your country. It will save you so much hassle guys, honestly. Because if we if we had a car ourselves, we'd be able to do all this ourselves. <music> guys, we just had to pull over on the side of the road because look at this. This gorgeous lake, like the most crystal clear mountain water. Natural spring. I just mm. wish I could jump in there and swim right now. Yeah. That is our stopover. Time to carry on. It's quite hard for us to see in here, guys, but this tunnel is basically apparently all marble. Wow. Let's have a look. Interesting. Guys, we've always wanted to travel to this part of the world. And this is exactly why, because they have got these absolutely beautiful landscapes and nature and just so much to offer that we've not seen in other places of the world. It's very, very unique to itself and it has its own character. And if you're wondering if you should come and check this place out, highly, highly recommend it because Taiwan is definitely the hidden gem of Asia. Look at this, guys. I'm not sure exactly where we are right now, but it's still part of the... Swallow Grotto. Swallow Grotto. It's the other side of the tunnel and it's a very popular um, photographic spot really. Yeah, it's basically you've got the river that flows down and then you've got the canyon that just splits right down the middle. It's so, so incredible. So we are back in the car now guys and we are in basically a tunnel that is also all created by marble. Just insane. Guys, now we are at the famous Nine Tunnels and the reason why it's called Nine Tunnels is because this area here used to basically be a place where people used to come and drive down. It's an old highway, whereas now it's actually turned into a scenic route. You can kind of see all the bridge uh, landscapes over there where people were kind of driving through and doing what they were basically doing. But now it's just turned into this absolutely beautiful scenic route where you can just walk down and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous scenery. Look at that. Wow, guys, this is probably one of the most beautiful routes we've actually done because we were actually trying to compare it to somewhere and we were saying the Himalayas in Nepal. It's so beautiful, look at this. I can see why they call it the most beautiful uh, trail because you've got waterfalls, you've got blue lakes, you've got carved mountains. Well, you can kind of also see how this used to be a motorway. Well, basically kind of like a cliff motorway because it's got all the turns, like there, all the bri under bridges. Uh... 
now going to head to a very nice spot for some uh, lunch. I believe we're going to have it with an Aboriginal tribe. No, it's it's an Aboriginal meal that we're going to uh, have. Okay. I don't think they live here any longer, but there is like a um, what do you call it? A nice meal like waiting. Like a for museum us. for them, right? Yeah. All right, let's go. <sighs> let's do this. Absolutely starving. It's just been a really hectic day so far, but wow, look at this place. So guys, we just sat down now and we have got our food and I ordered some beef and rice. We have some soup with it. It's absolutely delicious. Sweet potato. Sweet potato, vegetables, and another broth. Let's punch away. Guys, I'll show you around a little bit of this area and how they're making food, all the Aboriginal way. Uh, so here they're currently making um, bamboo rice. Now I'm just showing you guys a little bit of the actual restaurant itself. You've got photos here of all the Aboriginal people that have lived here for many, many years. And that was a nice little spot of lunch. It was very respectable. We just come get the energy level back up, have some rice, meat, vegetarian, they've got it all available. But now we are gonna head back into the car and head over to the next part of the adventure. Guys, we're now heading onto the famous suspension bridge here, which is extremely, extremely high, but we're gonna do it as part of the adventure. And it's raining now, perfect timing. We only had a few hours of sun. But it's all right, because now we're about to go on some crazy bridge. Guys, I don't know if you may have seen one of the videos when I was over in uh, Nepal and it went on this crazy suspension bridge, which was about 500 meters high. This one, I'm not sure how high it is, but again, you've got a beautiful valley just underneath you, but it's not, it doesn't seem as a bounty as the suspension bridge over in Nepal. This is very, very exciting uh, okay, to meet us. <laughs> so cute. It's a small country. Yes. We Not are. famous. It's, it, uh, <laughs> I always wanted to come to Taiwan, you know. It, Let them go ahead on the uh, bridge. And I'm not going on it because it's just way too high for me. I'm not a big fan of heights. But it's always better when you actually watch it from the outside than when you're actually on top of it. <laughs> How was it? Yeah, we just went to the end of the bridge. Saw some beautiful views. And now at one of my favorite spots in the whole trip. And it is this beautiful shrine that has been created to uh, mem for, for memory for the people that used to work around here and lost their lives when they were actually constructing everything. I already mentioned our next stop is Eternal Sp Spring Shrine. And it's not actually a real shrine. People don't go there to worship or pray. It's just been built to commemorate people that died building and constructing this area. And this is not a natural waterfall either. It's just been landscaped and built for us to enjoy. And also what our guide was saying is that they actually constructed it to look like a Chinese painting. Chinese landscape. A Chinese landscape painting. Yeah, it's painting. their style kind of. Yeah, they love kind of these mountains and then the beautiful shrine temple looking thing in the middle and the waterfall coming down. And let the adventure continue guys, here we go. We are now heading to this famous bell where basically it's for anybody. There is not kind of a religion or anything associated to it, but it's something that the uh, people here believe that if you ring the bell, you can make a wish or pray for the people that previously worked around this area and lost their lives due to the uh, tsunami that happened. But at the moment, we're just walking across a suspension bridge. Very strange because this one here, I'm not too uh, afraid of, but the other one that wasn't like bouncy but super high I was, so, yeah. To get up to the bell tower is a little bit of a hike, which we are doing right now, about 10 minutes uphill. So hopefully it's gonna be worth it because we'll be coming back down here. <sighs> We're gonna make a wish. 
finally made it to the bell tower and we have a monkey friend. Yeah, a little monkey. Wow, look at this. Look at the view, Anna. Look at me. Beautiful. Such an incredible view. It's actually worth the hike. I was thinking, is it worth the hike to come up and just ring a bell? But it definitely is. Look at this. Wow. We were just there. Yeah, we're just down, down there. So it's time to ring this bell. And apparently when we ring it, we can make a wish and uh, hopefully it will come true. Let's do it. <laughs> I've always seen this in movies and I've always wanted to do it in real life. Just be careful. Gently. Ready? Yeah. vibration if you've ever done gong meditation this is exactly how it is mine probably won't be as loud but i'll give it a good go you go and give it a go hard pull it mm. well guys and that's the bell tower officially over we've made our wish and took some cool Instagram photos as well. And uh, time to go to the next one. And guys, we have made it to our last stop, which is the beach. Can't leave this place without seeing the beach. Yeah, and guys, you will see it's actually really, really busy. So many cars, so many people here. And because it is the public holiday, so literally car after car. We're crossing? Yeah, we have to cross. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, we're just approaching the sea now, guys. And one thing we're realizing is how crystal clear blue the water is. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is so relaxing. This is how you should end every day. Yeah, look how blue the water is. Just looking at the mountains and enjoying the sound of the ocean waves. Guys, I think this is a great place to end our adventures today. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you've got any questions about the tour we did today, or any of the places we went to, just leave it in the um, comment section below and we'll get back to you. So. And if you come to Taiwan, guys, you have to make sure you come to Taroko National Park and stop over at this beach. It's a very relaxing and chill day. Yeah. And, and it just has to be done. Perfect way to end your day, just by coming here and watching that crystal clear blue water. So see you on the next video guys and don't forget to subscribe.